Australia boasts some of the world's best beaches. And that's one of the attractions for visiting US marine ecologist John Bruno. But the main reason he's here is to provide a global perspective on another natural wonder. We've lost a good portion of the world's corals due to primarily ocean warming, um, but there's so much left to protect. Australians seem more knowledgeable about the importance and the fate of their coral reefs than most other peoples internationally. Good management in part explains why the Great Barrier Reef is in relatively good condition. But there's another factor as well. Most of the world lost most of its coral in the 1980s and 1990s when coral bleaching and mass disease outbreaks really took off. The Great Barrier Reef bleaching and kind of coral wipeout in 2016 and 2017, it was a lot later than the rest of the world saw. So I think the GBR had just been lucky up until then. With mass bleaching along the Great Barrier Reef over the past two summers, that luck could be running out. The figure that's emerged um, is about 50% loss of coral overall over those events. And, you know, that's obviously a very significant blow to the reef. The average coral cover on the Great Barrier Reef is a little bit lower than across the Caribbean right now. And for decades, the GBR was held up as, you know, the pinnacle of what we could achieve with proper coral reef management. And that's proved to not be the case. Coral bleaching occurs when high water temperatures kill the tiny organisms that live inside coral structures. And then what you see is the white skeleton beneath the coral tissue, and so the whole coral looks pale, and the whole reef surface, in fact, can look kind of white. Bleached coral can grow back, but that takes time, and time is running out, as bleaching events are becoming increasingly common. We've never sort of seen this uh, ramping up of thermal stress in the way we see today and over the last two or three decades. Predicting when and where coral will bleach is difficult. Higher than average sea temperatures are a danger sign, but a week of overcast weather or a cyclone can slow down or even stop the bleaching process. Things like cyclones are actually important to cooling things down because they bring so much cool water to the surface, which is why it's hard to predict sometimes. Parts of central and north Queensland have seen falls of more than 100 millimetres. This summer, north Queensland has been hit by a couple of cyclones, which is good news on the bleaching front. But we're not out of the woods yet. Right now, we've certainly got our eyes well and truly focused on what's happening in the Great Barrier Reef. There's a little patch of warm water in the northern Great Barrier Reef north of Princess Charlotte Bay that we're a little bit concerned about and, and certainly are watching with interest. But at this stage, it really depends on the localised conditions. In the longer term, Professor Bruno is a relative pessimist. The, the, the most important lesson from the GBR bleaching has just been there's little we can do beyond curbing greenhouse gas emissions to protect the reefs from climate change. That view is not shared by University of Queensland professor Peter Mumby, who is also the chief scientist with the Great Barrier Reef Foundation. He says there's plenty that can be done apart from reducing emissions. The science is very clear. In order to have healthy reefs into the future, we need to manage it well locally, as well as, have, as having a good emissions policy. And protecting small parts of the Great Barrier Reef from runoff and crown of thorn starfish outbreaks can have a bigger effect. Part of the uh, resilience of the Great Barrier Reef is its size, it's the size of Italy. And within that there's huge variability and that's key. And one of the tools that managers are increasingly looking towards is to take advantage of that variability and use that to target where you intervene and make smarter decisions. At stake is not only a natural wonder, but a $6 billion a year tourism industry. It will severely be impacted, so will thousands of jobs and the diversity of tourism. The attraction to come to Australia, if we feel that it's just not worth doing or I'm a bit too late, that would have a massive impact. 
The tourism industry will be hit hard if UNESCO's World Heritage Committee lists the reef as being in danger. The federal government has been asked to submit a report to UNESCO later this year. In the end, the World Heritage Committee will need to make a decision based on the reality of the state of the reef and how well we manage it. And that includes not just local management measures such as water quality, but also how we're tackling climate change. And both professors Bruno and Mumby agree that when it comes to curbing the effects of coral bleaching, tackling climate change is vital. Of course, the big concern is that as we look out increasingly over the next few decades, that with the warming of the oceans that these sorts of events will not only be bigger but happen more frequently. And even if we don't see bleaching and coral mortality here in Australia, we'll almost certainly see it somewhere else in the world.